Hello YouTube, welcome back to the shop. Today in this episode of What's in Yours, we have a treat especial. We are going to be comparing the Dualtron 3 to the NAND Robot RS7. Now this is my buddy Scooter, he lent me to do this comparison and we'll be going over some of the features, um, the differences between the scooters, um, the size, things of that nature. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Now the reason why I want to um, compare these two scooters because they were price point wise they were both $2,700. Um, the Dualtron 3 he got for $2,700 because they did not have it in stock. The guy knocked off I think $300. Bucks. It took him three weeks to get it to his house. The Nan Robot was $2,700 bucks, and it took about two weeks to get it to the house. So let's go ahead and start with um, the controllers. Now, of course, the Dualtron 3 has a nicer controller. It's the eye controller, has a bunch more features than the NAND Robot JMP controller. So I'm not going to go over some of the basic steps like modes 1, 2, and 3. They both have a lot of the same basic um, uh, controls in there. But some of the ones on the eye controller that I want to highlight is that the Dualtron 3 has a slow start, 1 through 5. 1 being the lowest, 5 being the highest. And um, on this, uh, it, so it controls the torque. So you can set it on 1, so, so it's not as jerky when you hit the throttle. Uh, NAND Robot, of course, doesn't have that. Uh, the eye controller also has a battery save mode, and those are modes 1 through 3. And so 1 being um, low, 2 being high, and 3 being off, um, it kind of helps limit the battery. Now, the NAND Robot does not have that feature, but I'm assuming you can just do it through the um, Eco Mode button, or you can also adjust the tires. Uh, you just use the back or the front or, or a combination of, of whatever to uh, extend your speed a lot further. Next, the eye controller shows a battery percentage on the controller. It does not have an external battery um, meter like the NAND robot does. So the NAND robot does it through the, the key slash a voltmeter combination. It also does it on the controller, but I find that this seems to be a little bit more accurate because it loses, I think, one or two volts through the controller. Um, both of them have charging two charging ports right here on the DT3, on the NAND robots on the opposite side, but one extra feature the Dualtron 3 has is this third charging port. Uh, I'm sorry, it's not a charging port, but it's an external battery connection. So let's say uh, you wanted to go a really long distance and you're running low on battery, you would hit a switch um, underneath, it would disconnect that battery and use this battery, uh, whatever battery you had connected to this, and that battery you would mount, you know, hanging from the stem or whatever, or however you would have it connected uh, to your scooter. So that's a pretty cool feature to have, you know, something you could do later on down the road. Um, NAND, Rob NAND Robot, of course, does not have that um, charging. The Dualtron and the NAND Robot R7 have both about the same charging time with the standard charger. Now the Dualtron 3 comes with a speed charger um, for an extra <clears throat> 150 bucks. The NAND Robot, there is not an a speed charger that I'm aware of uh, for the RS7. So I'll show you the speed charger for the Dualtron, and it's a 6.5 amp. It charges the scooter up in about four hours. Now you can also get a, um, for the NAND robot, it has just a standard brick charger, but you can buy two of them, and that would charge a scooter up in about, <clears throat> uh, about five hours. Speed wise, the I mean, of course, it's all relative to the weight of the person and the and the voltage and blah blah blah. But in ideal conditions, the Dualtron three will top out at about forty miles an hour. The RS seven, <clears throat> uh, forty five to fifty, depending on the weight of the rider and the conditions and the voltage. 
Um, I, I can get 45 miles an hour easy all day long on the NAND robot, and I'm 210 pounds, <clears throat> excuse me, and six foot two. My buddy that rides the Dualtron 3, he is 5'11", 165 pounds. Um, but all, this, this scooter will go uh, 40 miles an hour even with me on it. So that's that. Um, the controller also, that I control on a DT3, um, counts how many times you've connected the charger to it. So that's kind of an additional feature. I don't know if it's useful or not, but it's just extra info. See how many times you have charged the batteries. Um, let's go over the lights on the scooter. Now, the NAND robots lights do, do not compare to the Dualtrons when it comes to the LED lighting. Because the Dualtron, the whole entire neck where it says Dualtron and those, uh, what does that say? The dream of electric technology. All that lights up. There's lights on the side and lights underneath the deck of the scooter. Um, and it does have a remote control and you can you know, turn it to basically to whatever you want, different colors, on, off, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the options are almost unlimited. The NAND robot has LED lights on the side there, but um, they are multicolored, but there's no way to control them. So they just come on, they change different colors, that's it. Uh, they both have really decent back red LED lights. Dualtrons right there. NAND robots here, but the NAND robot, the bottom lights always stay on. The top lights are brake lights now, and they only come on when you hit the brake. And I'll, I will show you that when I turn on the lights. The front of the scooters both have white LED lights on them. NAND robots, Dualtron 3s, they're both about the same um, brightness. Now, the differences in the lighting is where the NAND robot has the LED super bright spotlights. I mean, no aftermarket lights needing on, needed on this. They've worked really, really well. I really like them. Then they also have this red LED halo that goes around. It looks really cool at night. Uh, the Dualtron has no external light. That's why you had to buy this aftermarket light. But this aftermarket light, it's about eight, 900 lumens. Has a, um, a lot of different features. The charging time lasts really long. And then it also has a built-in alarm with a key fob. So that's a really nice feature. And I'll put that link down in the description if you want to check out that light. I thought it was pretty cool. Um, next thing is the horn. NAND robot has a really loud horn. Now this one's not annoying, like that annoying beeping sound uh, like the D4 Plus has. This actually sounds like a Honda Civic or, I mean, still a little bit annoying, but it sounds more like a real horn. The Dualtron 3 does not have any type of signaling, signal, signaling device or noise maker, so you will have to add that aftermarket. The Dualtron 3 also has a power disconnect button that's right here on the side turns the power off to the scooter so I guess if you want to work on the electrical or whatever um, it disconnects that battery on um, power to the scooter if you're doing some work on it of course the NAND robot does not it does um, it is turned off by this key right here now the Dualtron 3 there's no way to cut up uh, cut off the power so if you went inside the store real quick someone wanted to take off your scooter and it wasn't chained up or locked up or whatever the case may be, they could turn on the scooter and they could ride off with it. The NAND robot, you cannot do that because of the key here. The key will turn the power off. Once the key is removed, there is nothing you can do with this scooter. Um, let's talk about some measurements. I don't know if you guys can tell from the video, but the RS7 is so much bigger. And so let, let's, let's look at the deck sizes here. The deck size on the Dualtron 3 is 11 inches wide by 22 inches long. And uh, the deck height from the ground to the top of the deck is 10 inches. 
and from outside wheel to outside wheel the entire scooter is 45 inches long give or take um, a little bit there these are not um, you know absolute measurements we, we, we measured as best as we could also from the floor to the top of the neck it is 49 inches and the neck is not adjustable on the dual tron um, which is kind of disappointing but uh it is what it is it has a very sturdy neck um there's not a lot of play in it it feels really stable and solid let's go over to the nan robot and look at the measurements here this deck is massive um it's a 12 inch wide deck at the widest point it does have these little curves here but it's 12 inches here to here and it is 20, 24 inches long on the deck from the ground to the top of the deck is 11 inches and the scooter from outside wheel to outside wheel is 55 inches so it's considerably longer and the deck is a lot bigger um, I thought that coming off of the D4 Plus, going on to the Dualtron 3, felt so much bigger at the time. But now that I rode on the RS7 and the Dualtron 3, the Dualtron 3 to me seems a lot smaller. Um, but then also too, from the ground to the top of the neck is <clears throat> 52 inches and the neck is adjustable which I'm glad it can go all the way up to 52 inches because again, I'm 210 pounds, six foot two, and it's a lot more comfortable for me to ride. So bigger guys, I think you would lean more towards the RS7 or something similar or get a bigger uh, dual Tron because uh, it's not as comfortable to ride of uh, the dual Tron 3 as the Nan Robot RS7. The shocks on here, uh, on the RS7, the hydraulic, they got one in the back and then one in the front right there. The And they're not adjustable. You, you cannot adjust those, but it's literally like you're floating on that thing. It's a really nice ride. The Dualtron 3, um, if anybody's aware of it or if you don't know, has these cartridges. One goes in here. And one goes into the neck here. Um, and they range from, you know, soft, medium, soft, medium, um, all the way up to hard. So you can play around with that. But those are an additional, that's an additional cost um, on the Dualtron 3. So a couple of things that you will have to buy um, if you want to adjust some of the uh, suspension on there. The fenders on the Dualtron, they're both front and back are plastic. On the Nan Robot R7, uh, it's aluminum up front, a hard aluminum. Of course, aluminum is hard, but has aluminum fender up front and then a plastic on the back. But when mine was shipped to me, mine was broken, and so they're going to be sending me a new one. But who knows whenever that's going to get here. Uh, the wheels on both scooters the Dualtron 3 has 10 inch by 2.7 by six and a half um inner diameter on the hub and it's almost impossible to find uh wheels that will fit on that hub we've talked to many motors and we've looked at some aftermarket stuff uh, we can't seem to find anything because uh, my buddy wanted to maybe put some, uh, change out the tires to off-road tires, and we cannot find none that will fit. But they are full pneumatic tires. They have no tubes on the inside. And if um, somebody can find some tires for that, put, leave it down in the comments. I would appreciate that. Be a big help. Um, now, on the Nan Robot, those tires are 11-inch tires. They're 90-65-6.5 tires huge tires uh they on the out but it's interesting on the outside of the tire it says tubeless but there is a tube in that tire but i guess that tire can also come as a tubeless full full pneumatic tire and i think i want to say 
if I'm not mistaken, you can get that on the Thunder. It doesn't, it doesn't have tubes um, inside the tires. They both have folding handlebars. The NAN Robot has a uh, lever there that folds, and when you fold it, it locks into place. The Dualtron 3 has a lever here. This lifts up, and you fold it down. Now, the only thing about the Dualtron 3 is my buddy put this handle on the back where that locking lever, this right here, would lock into it. But since he put this footrest on there, footrest slash handle, he had to remove that. So when you fold this down, the neck's just kind of down and it's not locked into place. So you can't lift it up by the neck if you wanted to. Um, so that's a sacrifice you have to make to have that footrest on the back. And that footrest was extra money. And uh, as of right now, they're out of stock of these. And I think this footrest was 80 bucks. So the footrest for the NAN robot um, came with the scooter. There was no extra cost um, involved with that. So now that we went through some of the specs, if I missed anything or if you're curious um, about anything else, leave it down in the comments and I'll try to answer your questions. But let's take a look inside the scooters. So we already took the screws out for, for the lids. And I want to give you an idea of what the scooter looks like on the inside. Here's the battery, mini motors. Uh, we got LG 60 volt, 28 amp hour battery. We have all your wiring and the controllers underneath that. The controller for the light is right here. You basically point the remote at this receiver and that's what changes your lights. But and this was important to me to show you because I want you to see the difference in quality, even though the price points are about the same. Oh, one thing else I need to mention is that this has a gasket that goes around uh, what I do with it. But it, oh, here it is. It has a gasket in here to help for waterproofing. All right. And here's the NAN robot. And robot RS7. Here's the inside look of this scooter. Um, battery 18650 cells, 16 series, 12 parallel. Pretty massive battery. It's huge. It's heavy. 60 volts, 32 amp hours. Um, huge battery in there. Then you got the typical spaghetti mess of wiring and kind of all hot glued together from Nan Robot. And Nan Robot also failed miserably with trying to seal up this deck. They used some kind of black RTV here. And uh, so I'm going to make a gasket um, to go on that to waterproof it up just a little bit. You can see right here too, kind of janky. And the controllers, they didn't have room because the battery's so big. And um, they put them on the outside. So that's what these two little bumps are right here and right here. Um, also, too, they didn't have that much padding in here uh, like you would see. All right, you see this nice foam padding here that kind of holds that battery into place on the Dualtron. This, they didn't do a very good job. I had to add my own padding in here just to kind of keep the battery from moving around because, you know, I'm always going off curbs or off-road or whatever the case may be, and I want that battery bouncing around. So now that we did that, let's check out the lights on these scooters. So I'm going to turn them both on and let you check out the differences. Let me... uh Turn off this, these lights here. All right, so both um, back LED lights, as you can see here, both scooters, they both have working brake lights. So these are like a, a doubled up. Uh, they're always on, but when you hit the brake light, it goes brighter. With the NAN robot, brake lights, let me see if I can reach this thing. 
Uh, oh, I gotta turn on the controller. On mine. Sorry about that. There we go. There's the brake lights. Now this one's not working. The brake light because it was broken upon shipping. Typical man robot. Everything always comes in broken. Broken during shipping for some reason. I need to mention also too that when my buddy got his out of his box, not perfect, pristine. He took it out of the box, charged it up, drove it. Even after checking all the bolts, there was no bolts that were loose, blah, blah, blah. Of course, Nan Robot, everybody complains. I, I don't know, maybe the shippers are mad at them because they're always breaking the scooters before you get it, but it is what it is. Um, the You see how the neck lights up? And like I said, you can basically do anything you want to these lights. Um, has some lights underneath on the Dualtron. And then, of course, the front LED lights. They don't do much. They just kind of light up the ground immediately in front of you. Now, the Nanrobot RS7. Here's the lights on the side. I want to kind of give you an idea of what they do. But they stay on like that. A little annoying. I wish I, I wish I could do that, control them, but maybe that's something I'll tackle in the future and get some different lights I can actually control. But where the Nan Robot excels in lighting on the RS7 is these freaking front headlights, man. They're they're super bright. No aftermarket lights needed. Let's see if you can get a a shot on those halo lights. Nope. Uh, it's, it's hard to see. But you get the picture and so of course in the front led lights not, not really nothing uh they're not anything special just added extra lights so that's basically the overview of the nan robot rs7 versus the dualtron 3 i thought it would be a good video to do because they're both about the same price point um, quality wise, in my opinion, the Dualtron 3 wins. Uh, if you're a big guy and you need a bigger scooter, the Nanrobot RS7 uh, would be a lot more comfortable ride for 